mixing up my art resin. Hi, Eric. Can you all hear me okay? I have a noisy dog chewing on a bone in the background. So we're going to try something new today that I've not done before. Hey mom, hey Melissa. Okay, I bought this serving tray a long time ago. I just taped it off so I wouldn't get my sticky resin hands on the outer part. These are the things I'm thinking about maybe working with today. Okay, so I thought since Thanksgiving's coming up, a serving tray might be in order. And I have the, had this sitting around and haven't done anything with it. So I thought maybe we'd try like a freeform geode in it. and um, lay some crystals in it. And it'll be an experiment. I don't know how it will turn out, but we'll start with one layer in the next uh, 45 minutes or so that we have together. So it's gonna be kind of a wing it project because I don't have a plan. Hi, Hobie. I'm just wiping it out with an alcohol wipe. There's some uh, stuff floating around on it for me working over the top of it glitter absolutely you must not know me yet I'm a glitter addict so I've mixed up about four ounces of resin and this is art resin today I don't even know if that's gonna be enough but we'll, we'll just go with it I'm gonna start dividing it into some cups Remember not to leave your resin sitting in a big container like this. It'll cure really fast. Yeah, I love my glitter. So I think I'm going to start with the center of what would be the geode. This is Glitz Glitter. You guys all know it's my favorite. Here's that glitz, and it's got a lot of blue tones in it, a little bit holographic-y, so I thought that would go well with our blue tray. I don't know if you can see that. And this is a pretty big project to work on in the hour that Instagram gives us, so we might not get all the way through it, but we'll get at least something down. center of my geode. So I'm going to go ahead and build a crystal barrier so that we can start pouring the rest of this. And I'm going to work a little quicker than I normally do <laughs> because we've got, we're going live here and I can't take forever. This tray fits perfect in my Lazy Susan, so it's kind of cool. I can just turn it and work on it. I'm not in love with the shape of the center of my geode here, but it seems like that's always my frustration, but once I get that down, this is what happens when I don't plan ahead. This is diamond dust. It's like fine shards of glass. I'm just going to go ahead and lay some of that down in the middle. This is why I like using my magic sculpt clay because then I can <laughs> make it the shape I want. But that's okay. 
And then I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more glitz in the middle to make that sparkle pop. I don't know if you guys can see that see this as good as I can. The camera always throws off my colors, but we can do a close-up later. So there's that. All right, let's mix up some white. I'm gonna go with my favorite armor epoxy white. We can work on that more later. Just wanna start getting some colors down. Might even want to put some um, crystals in here. Sorry if I'm blocking, blocking the view. So this is that nice epoxy pigment by Armor Art. So let's, uh, so I bend the cup so I can just get a little bit to drizzle out. Create a line around the sky. Oops, drippage. That's okay though. Okay, now let's do another color. Let's start adding some blues in. So many blues to choose from. Maybe we'll try this. This is a mica powder. This is also going to be in the giveaway. I have a whole bunch of my own mica powders. I stir the mica powders in kind of gently because they'll spread all over the place. And then once you get them mixed in, just stir it up real good. And these are really metallic -y, even pearlescent-y, so they make, make it just shine and sparkle. So we'll do a thin line next to the white. Go ahead and add another little bit of white because I have a feeling it's going to get buried in all these colors. See how it just kind of magnetizes to that other resin? Okay. All right, let's mix another blue. Try to go a little lighter each time or a little darker. So this blue looks a lot like that blue. What I may do is lighten it up a little. Maybe I'll add a little bit of this really light sky blue to it. Yeah, we'll keep going. The white will... I kind of want it to blend a little bit, but let's see if we can't change the color of this blue up a little bit. Make it lighter.
Yeah, it's a little lighter. I like that. Okay, let's add another line of blue. And with the background of this tray being blue, it's kind of changing the way our perception is with the colors on here too. I'll go around one more time with this blue. All right, I'd like to mix some silver. I've never tried this before. We're going to have an experiment. So I'm gonna use some liquid leaf silver in my resin. Normally I use it when it's cured, so I don't know what's gonna happen or what it's gonna look like, but let's give it a try. It may be a disaster. We will see. So this is liquid leaf. It's actually not as silver as I would want it to be. It's kinda Kind of, um, I don't know, grayish? Maybe it's antique silver. Not what I was going for, but that's okay. We'll go with it. I might add a little bit of um, something else in there. Well, not sure how I feel about the silver. I might add in some other silver if I can find it. I'm gonna add in a little bit of this and see what happens. So I'm adding mica powder now to this silver um, liquid leaf. I have no idea what's gonna happen when we do this, but ah, disaster strikes. This is what happens when I try to talk and resin at the same time. I think I'll go back in with some white. It's kind of fun just winging it, not always having it all figured out ahead of time. I'm gonna pop a smidge of heat on it. Whoa, okay. This was the torch that was giving me fits the other day. I need to mark that one. Did you guys see that? This will help blend those colors a little too. So that silver line's kind of disappearing in there. So I'm not too worried about it now. I think I'll add another bit of that silver line. I'm gonna stir it up again though because it's doing funky things. I think it's time for a glitter line. I wonder how just a really thick glitter line of the glitz would look. Should we try that? I'm gonna dump a whole bunch in. Whoa, not that much. Holy camoli. You think I got enough glitter in there, guys? <laughs> that was a little excessive. So you guys probably can't see this that well, but this is just resin with glitter. I'm gonna give it a little torch. Start blending these colors a smidge to soften the lines a little bit. a little bit of interest going in there. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's coming together. Got a lot of cell action happening now because I gave it the heat. So I'm just dumping in some clear resin. That's a turquoise by La Res. It's another mica powder. You'll notice I use a lot of mica powders in my work because I love that pearlescent look. And they blend beautifully and the colors stay. You don't have any fading with them or anything. back in with a little bit of white. I like to add the white because it really gives you a lot of that coalescing effect and it creates that lot the lines that you see in real geodes. So I just saw I had this tiny little turquoise glass sitting there and decided I wanted to add that to the middle on a whim. Alright, I'm going to go back in with some blue. Some of our other blue. And I'll go back in. I'm going to have to mix up some more blues. Let me do that. Definitely not going to have enough resin. So we may just do it until I run out of resin and then we'll continue it later. Or I'll mix up some more after I get off camera with you guys so you're not bored to death. Bored to tears. Alright, going back in with this other shade of blue. filling in some of those gaps there. You're right, it does kind of look like an island. Hey, that's okay too. Um, I think we'll go back in with that silverish color. I like my metals to really sparkle. So I'm going to see what happens when I do this glitter line. I'm not sure it's going to be what I want. But so I'm going to take some of my snow white glitter and dump that in there too. It's okay to mix your glitters and really thick. Then they don't spread out as much when you pour them. And give it a little heat. Thanks, Eric. This pops the bubbles, but also blends my colors and creates some pretty interesting effects, for those of you who don't know. And your heat gun will do that too, I just don't want to get that out, I don't want to spread this around too much at this point. Alright, I think we're ready to go back to blues. May need to mix more of this. This is that turquoise by the rest. So just mixing in some more mica powder. Pour that around. The 
colors are a lot richer and brighter in real life. So my hour on Instagram ran out and I said goodbye to all of my followers and continue to complete this first layer on my own. And I'm just going back in with my same colors and glitter lines repeating the process until I get the effect I want and fill this tray with resin and sparkly goodness. I ended up mixing up some more resin because my 4 ounces did not go far on this 14 inch diameter tray. This tray actually fit perfect in the Lazy Susan I had just bought, and I'll put that in my links as well. But it's perfect because then you can twirl your art around while you're working on it and get all those nooks and crannies. Now I'm just using a toothpick to go in and blend some of those lines through the other colors. You can see it's really taking on a life of its own as I heat it up and blend it and move it around. So my first layer cured and now I'm going in with acrylic paint marker to add some white lines in places that I think might give it a little more pop and dimension before I put another coat of resin on it. You'll see that I go in with some alcohol wipes and erase my lines, the ones that I don't like, and redo them. It's great to have those alcohol wipes on hand because they act like an eraser when you're drawing in those lines. And also just cleaning up your hands and everything when you're working with that sticky resin. So now I'm going in with a different type of resin. This is a countertop epoxy. It has a lot shorter working time, but it is more durable. It's a thicker product, and this was a pretty cold day. So it was a little bit harder to get all those air bubbles out, which is why I'm working it with my heat gun as well as my torch. This brand of countertop epoxy is a lot thicker to work with than my typical art resin, but because it's a functional piece of art, I really felt like I needed to put a more hardy surface on it. And I do this multiple times. And let me tell you, those air bubbles were a lot more difficult to get out of this resin than I'm used to with my art resin. 
So typical me, I decided I need more sparkle. So I went ahead and added in these check crystals, which I love. They're so sparkly and pretty, and they pick up different color hues. So I really love working up with them. Although this was a really long, tedious process, placing every little single one of these upright because the backside is not shiny. It's got a flat surface, so you have to make sure your crystals are upright so you can get that sparkle. I felt like it needed something else to break up the lines that I'd put in earlier. So I took some of my Glitz glitter and mixed it into some of my resin that had been thickening up. And I just drew it through with a popsicle stick. And it really is cool. It's like suspended in my resin and under my resin. Really was a cool effect that I know I'll be using again and again now. Just trying to give you a visual of what that glitz looks like as it's floating through, suspended in that second layer of resin. And you can see my crystals are still sticking out in the middle, so of course this is going to take another coat of resin. My second layer has cured, and after looking at my tray, I decided I wanted more crystals. So I took some resin that I had left over from other projects I was working on, and went ahead and just drizzled a line around the rim of my tray and set those crystals in there, which again took forever. And then I let that cure before moving on to my final coat of that countertop epoxy to give it a really flat, shiny surface that can be used as a tray. A very pricey tray, but a really pretty tray. <laughs> Now I'm just putting in the rest of my resin, picking out any little dust specks I can find, and giving it a little bit more torch to pop those last pesky bubbles. I hope this video isn't too long or boring for you, but I really appreciate you guys, and if you like what I'm doing, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out, and leave a comment to let me know what you think about my tray. Have an amazing day, and we'll catch you next time. Happy creating!